good noon everybody myself dr janathanan dr janathanan assistant professor department of forensic medicine and toxicology sri lakshmanarayana institute of medical sciences pondicherry and today's topic is on post mortem changes the changes which have to happen after after death death of a person okay let's get into the topic post mortem changes and time since death when the person has died we are going to see how and how to determine the death and what time the person has died from the changes which have which happened to the dead body the signs of death it can be classified into three immediate signs of death early signs of death and late signs of death the immediate signs of death are nothing but the somatic death the cellular death is nothing but the cellular level death for the somatic death the brain the heart circulation cessation of circulation and the respiration all these three all these three uh, denotes the somatic death and the signs of death the cellular the early sign of death is the cellular death the early sign of death is the cellular death and we will see that in detail the late sign of death is nothing but the decomposition changes how the body will decompose and uh, all those thing changes after happen after the death which happen on late now coming to the immediate changes somatic death entire permanent and cessation of respiration and circulation the heart stops the heart the pumping heart stops pumping blood to the organs of the body other organs of the body and uh, the respiration the respiration will stop respiration will stop there won't be oxygen flow or the carbon dioxide going out of the body out of the lungs and uh, there is no supply supply of oxygen to the transport of oxygen to the uh, body whole body organs and the tissues and then insensibility and loss of power means there is brain uh, there is brain the brain will get its activities its its control over the body it loses control over the body coming to the early signs cellular death changes in the eye changes in the skin cooling of the body which is called the alga mortis post mortem lividity post mortem lividity and changes in the muscle coming to the changes in the eye late changes are putrefaction adipocere and mummification we shall, we shall see that in detail suspended animation suspended animation is a condition it's a vegetative state in which the vital functions of the body are at such a low pitch that they cannot be determined by ordinary method of clinical examination which is lasting for a few seconds to half an hour to more okay that means nothing but the uh, mr nityananda a sage from bangalore he is living in a bangalore he has stopped this heart rate and uh, completely he has stopped his heart uh, heart for a few seconds and he has shown it that he has gone to a state of suspended animation vegetative state in which vital functions of the body are such low pitch that they cannot be determined by ordinary methods of clinical examination which is lasting for a few seconds to half an hour to more trance yoga catalepsy cholera typhoid state all these states will determine it hanging frozen coma electrocution that location is nothing but electrical injury because of that complete stoppage of heart can happen for few seconds the brain function can stop for few seconds tetanus convulsion poisons by narcotics surgical shock anesthesia still born in fans still born in fans hypothermia of heart and treatment coming to the treatment cardiac massage cardiac massage cpr stimulator with artificial respiration continuous examination of heart and lung with stethoscope lasting for 5 minutes and repeated at short intervals will enable an option to be formed okay in case of doubt this may be supplemented by the following test for circulation magnus test like it's at base of the finger to cut off venous flow finger remains white if dead and bluish and swollen beyond ligature if alive okay diaphragmatic test fingers appear scarlet 
or very red or the translucent if finds a bit abducted hand in hell again strong light will appear yellow after death okay i cut test hypodermic injection of fluorescein there won't be any changes with that the neighboring skin will be yellowish to green when seen in daylight if living dissolving 1 gram of resorcip halin plus 1 gram of fluorescein sodium cyanide in uh, 8 grams of water one application of withdrawal of pressure finger nail assume application of heat blisters with red line cutting a small artery ecg tracing continuous five minutes there are a lot of methods mirror tips dim due to the condensation of warm moist hair exhaled from lungs useful in cold weather feather test early signs of death major changes are changes in the eye changes in the skin which is of important cooling of the body algar mortis pm levity to liver mortis changes in the muscle rigor mortis changes in the eye the reflexes first the reflexes will lose the reflex abortion of abolition of pupillary and corneal reflexes the luster loss of luster luster is nothing but the shininess shininess of the eye we will lose it that is the luster the glist the gl the glow to the eye we will lose it the cornea it becomes dry hazy and opaque temporary changes after 15 to 30 minutes can be washed away but the permanent changes after 10 to 12 hours which is rarely uh, rarely these changes present before death in uremia narcotic poisoning cholera may be absent for some in cyanide and carbon monoxide poisoning the pupils the pupils are completely dilated normally 5 mm may respond to myotic sun myotic sun to hearts for two hearts after that there won't be any reaction even if myotic sun myotics are added example ne and nystagmine and physostigmine uh, and added there will be constriction and relaxation of the pupils but after two to three hearts any pressure applied may change shape of the pupil itself will change the shape of the pupil intraocular tension normally 14 to 25 mm mm of hygrometer immediately after death 12 hours of nar after death 3 mm 2 hours after death 0 mm of h sclera tachin noir tachin noir due to deposition of dust when i remains open after death see this is a post mortem conducted in raja rajeshwari medical college when i was post graduate here you can see the tachin noir line due to the open eye there is a line formation this is tachin noir you can see it changes in the eye see the glow of the eye is as lost it is better to cover always the eyes but for uh, record sake for the case of knowledge i am revealing the identity of the person the eyes are not hidden these cases are done by me myself in the retinal blood vessels see the retinal blood vessels evocation sign the most important sign to calculate the time since death in living there will be continuous line in the blood vessels due to the blood flow continuous blood flow but in half to one half to two hours after death dotted lights you can see because decrease decrease in the blood pressure fragmentation of blood hanging of the blood the clotting of blood there will be gaping in between the blood flow and this will lead to the railroad appearance of the blood vessel in the eye after 3 hours after death the optic disc will become pale and hazy the blood optic disc after 10 to 10 hours electrolytes increase in potassium and ascorbic acid in vitreous humor changes in the skin the skin becomes grayish white paler blood drains from cutaneous blood vessels loss of transparency you can see tested by examining webs under the light when the webs of the hand or the feet if it's tested under the light there is no life you can see is tested by examining under the light there will be some blanching or sometimes a red redness in case of live and dead person loss of elasticity pm wounds don't gape and uh, that is postmortem wounds after that 
after death when a person is incised or cut there won't be gaping in between the wounds but when a person is alive you can see a gaping of the wound the gap and uh, areas that is press uh, press gets flattened and also you can see bleeding in case of live person but in a dead person after death you can't see bleeding because the flood blood gets clotted after few hours the lips becomes dry hard and brown algar mortis this is an important sign of people for you algar mortis nothing but the cooling of body the dead body loses its heat by conduction convection radiation and evaporation when atmospheric temperature is low and that of the body is high so as to attain the atmospheric temperature that is the body cools it is also called the chill of death the temperature falls of more than 10 degree it is a sure sign of death recording of temperature the chemical thermometer is inserted 10 cm deep in the rectum under liver vagina ear or nose for 2 to 3 minutes the time since death the normal rectal temperature observed rectal temperature rate of fall of temperature per hour this is the formula to calculate the time since death for the algar mortis the rate of cooling this is the curve the curve denotes the time required for cooling of the body first 2 to 6 hours 2 to 2.5 fahrenheit reduction the next 6 hours 1.5 to 2 fahrenheit per hour later on 1 fahrenheit per hour external surface cool in 12 to 15 hours internal surface cools in 18 to 24 hours factors affecting algar mortis it depends on the age what happens if it's a if the age is of a smaller age smaller number If the person is of a child childhood age there will be less muscle so the person will lose heat very fast and the same if the person is of a adult age he'll be losing heat from his body at a slower rate but at the same time if it's a old age old age it what happens is the body will lose temperature immediately as of in the younger age in this age general condition of the body in case of a person who has lot of uh, comorbidities in those cases what happens is the body will lose temperature at a faster rate and the sex males will have more heat due to the more mass and most uh, more muscles and also more uh, broader surface area of the body with of the body and in females they lose heat very soon but in the males there is little delayed in losing the heat and also cloths the cloths also if it's a thick cloth there is loss of heat very less loss of heat the body's rate of cooling is reduced due to very thick covering of the cloths and if it's a, the, the body is naked immediately it gets cooled exposed to the atmospheric temperature and if the atmospheric temperature is very hot then it is difficult to lose temperature of the uh, temperature of the body atmospheric temperature it depends on the atmospheric temperature mainly if it's a uh, sandy area a very desert area when uh, the body is exposed to the desert then it, the body of the the temperature of the body it is very very uh delayed in losing heat it is called postmortem caloricity postmortem caloricity the after death the body will get equal to the temperature of the atmosphere in a sandy like the desert areas types of death depending upon the type of death in case of poisoning there is complete uh reduction in the temperature of the body very soon the surrounding surroundings already we have seen atmosphere the rate of cooling depends on where it is exposed in case of water if the body is exposed in water like if a person has drowned the rate of cooling is four times better than air and when it is buried and the medical legal importance it is a sure sign of death the time since death of is approximated to an extent we can estimate the time since death to an extent the past more the post mortem caloricity may occur in some cases it gets 
acclimatized to the temperature around the, the body gets acclimatized to the temperature around the surrounding area. PM calories it is seen in death uh, due to heat stroke, lightning, electric current, burns, death associated with extreme muscular activity, tetanus, pain poisoning, etc. The liver mortis, the liver mortis definition, stagnation of blood in toneless uh, dilated capillaries of the dependent parts of body due to gravity resulting in bluish purple staining of these parts. It's mainly due to the blood getting collected outside the blood vessels and on the dependent part. For example, if the part, if the, uh, if the backside of the body, if the dead body is lying backside on the ground, the dead body will show redness due to collection of blood. See, on the backside, you can see collection of blood. This can be altered if the position of the body is changed. In case of hanging, you can see the uh, blood getting collected in the lower limbs. Okay. And uh, it is of bluish purple color as time passes, as time moves on, the staining of these parts. It is also called as cadaveric lividity, sagellation, darkening of death, PM hypostasis, vibrisis. In supine position on posterior aspects of the body, it will look like a butterfly. Okay. As a scapula, the shoulder blades, we call it the shoulder blades. In these cases, when the body is uh, like when it's lying supine, what happens is the shoulder blades, on the shoulder blades, it looks like a butterfly, butterfly wings. It hanging on distal halves of upper and lower limbs in drowning on upper half of body. In running water, no fixed site of liberty is seen. Contact pallor. As I told you, it looks like a butterfly on the backside. It's called the contact pallor. And the contact flattening. Seen in supine body, shoulder, buttocks, occipital area. And also, uh, in case of contact flattening, supine uh, shoulder, body, Vibrisis seen in areas of ties, neck belt, waist, band, etc. Waist band, etc. PM staining also seen in internal viscera. Internal viscera. Okay. See, these are pictures of showing lividity, collection of blood over the backside. Backside. See the hand. It happens, the blanching happens when pressure is applied and it's not fixed at a certain position. See here, you can see the difference. The body's position also you can determine from the VBCs. Staining versus time of curve. The time starts after one hour from death. Gets fixed after six hours, six to eight hours. You can't say it approximately six hours because you can't give an exact time. Six to eight hours is a better value. No blanching is seen after fixation of the lividity, but still in the body's altered position and kept for a long time, the lividity position changes too. Factors affecting the amount of blood. If the person is anemic, you can't see postmortem lividity at all. Okay. And the length of time blood remains unfluid, fluid condition. And the uh, colors of PM lividity normally bluish pink and color in case of carbon monoxide poisoning blood very red in the cyanide poisoning and burns bright red in opm poisoning black in case of phosphorus poisoning it's dark brown and in case of potassium chloride it's chocolate brown and uh, nitrate poisoning it's dark brown and in asphyxia dark bluish purple and in hypothermia it's pink and in case of mummification brownish black all these are the color changes in the postmortem lividity the conditions of postmortem lividity colors normally bluish pink or purple in carbon monoxide poisoning, bright cherry red, cyanide poisoning is bright red, and the opium poisoning black. We have seen this already. And uh, postmortem lividity after hanging. This is the picture. See the postmortem circulation. You can see it. This is. This is the body of a female. In case of carbon monoxide poisoning, it's cherry red. See, it's a cherry red. The difference you can see, you can make it out. 
it's generated in this case in carbon monoxide poisoning, differential diagnosis of dose and condition, and just now viscera. Medical legal importance, it is a sure sign of death and uh, time of death you can estimate from like six to eight hours and uh, fixation of the postmortem lividity. From that you can determine the time since death of a person. And if the body is shifted in six hours, it can be known. And the cause of death can be known, example, hanging and drowning in those cases. The position of the body you can determine to an extent. Changes in the muscle. Coming to the changes in the muscle, there will be a primary relaxation after death. And it goes to a uh, stiffness of the muscles. It is called the stage of rigor mortis cadaveric rigidity. And then the secondary relaxation. Cadaveric spasm or instantaneous rigor, followed by rigor mortis and secondary relaxation. The first is primary relaxation. The eyeballs, they get shrink. Pupils change shape on pressure. All muscles are relaxed. The lower jaw drops. Ah, it happens like that. All joints relax and movements possible. Relaxation of all spinces, the soap, incontinence of fecus and uh, urine and uh, cement, you can see expulsion of them. Maybe delivery in pregnant, it is called postpartum delivery. Characteristics coincides with somatic death. Anaerobic enzymatic process continues. Sufficient ATP content, the muscles response to mechanical and electrical stimuli still, even after death, mechanical death, uh, stimuli and uh, electrical stimuli. For example, if we are making a cut incision, still the bleeding occurs, and also there will be gaping of the skin. You can see that after death, in this primary relaxation period, electrical stimuli also will get respond in case of CPR when given, when the current is passed through the heart and the muscles which react to the current, there is electrical stimuli, people's response to drugs, atropine and physiostigmine. At times of peristalsis, it may present, it may be present, the intestinal movements, the peristalsis is nothing but the intestinal movement. You can see that reactions of muscle is alkaline, last till two to three hours, only till molecular death occurs. Okay. Rigor mortis coming to the second stage. <coughs> Rigor mortis is nothing but the contraction, stiffening, shortening, and opacity of muscles after death. It's called the molecular death mechanism. It loses ATP synthesis and fusion of actin and myosin filament. The muscles involved are all voluntary and involuntary muscles, even paralyzed muscles. And the distance law, liger mortis progresses downwards, jaw, neck, shoulder, elbow. In this order, it uh, passes down, hip to the knee, ankle to the toe. Okay. First, first it starts with the jaw, then to the neck, show, passes to the shoulder and hip, and the elbow to the knee and wrist to the ankle, finger to the toe. Agree with this tendency. Many pathologists, they agree with this tendency. This is called the Niston Slav. It has been described in 1811. Then next is Sapiro's theory. Tiger mortis is a physiochemical, physiochemical reaction which occurs simultaneously in all muscles. Therefore, the Tiger mortis progresses from smaller muscle to larger muscles. Therefore, Tiger mortis in the body progresses downwards. Many forensic pathologists believe this too. Okay, But the exact theory the exact mechanism is still unclear because a lot of light is needed in this theory. Okay. Next is the three components of the rigor mortis. In this rigor mortis, what happens? The main component is the ATP. As the ATP depletes, as the ATP depletes, um, what happens is the actin myosin filament, which has been separated by the Actin, myo, uh, actin myosin filament, which are separated by the ATP molecules. As the ATP depletes, they form a unbreakable covalent bond. And this becomes what happens is stretching of the muscles. And uh, there is stiffness of the muscles. It increases the stiffness, the isotonic contraction, shortening immediate muscles after death. After death of the body, my myocytes still try to maintain the internal end bond using ATP. So the glycogen will get depleted and from that ATP is also generated. 
no blood flow no oxygen supply no nutrition total aptp decreases more rapidly the uh, rigor mortis progresses the differential progression was reflected by the rapid decrease of atp level in red muscles rigor mortis of human masticatory muscles can progress more rapidly than other muscles because of the presence of special red muscle fibers with large diameter and uh, rigor mortis progress more rapidly than 25 degrees celsius rapid post mortem cooling of the peripheral of the extremities can cause differential progression of rigor mortis in the extremities difference in biomechanics between the joints may contribute to the differential progression of rigor mortis effects of rigor mortis the whole body becomes rigid and flexible all joints become fixed and flexed air may stand out it's cause goose like yes what happens is during rigor mortis the hairs the skin they shrink due to the stiffening of the muscles the skin shrinks and due to that the hair may appear growing the hair may appear very growing okay because the beard doesn't grow after death the hair doesn't grow after death and uh, but still what happens the hair will pop out due to shrinking of the skin and due to rigor mortis mortis tightening of the muscles this happens and uh, it look like goose like and also the hair is growing testis may be drawn out drawn up okay semen may be become empty it may be expelled due to the muscle shrinking stiffening heart may become empty reaction of muscle is acidic passing of rigor it is due to autolysis and decomposition or forcibly it is broken breaking of rigor forcible extension of the joints during shifting of the red body this is how we examine the eyelids when we try to pull up the eyelid it feels difficulty it gives resistance so it has occurred in the eyelid muscles the muscles of the eye okay next is examination of the jaw when you pull down the jaw muscles are stiff and it gives resistance then the rigor has passed to the the rigor has happened in the jaw muscles next flexion the flexion will be giving some resistance it is possible to flex the joints but still with resistance then the rigor has happened in the joints this is how we examine if we try to open up the palm in case of cadaveric spasm it is difficult but still it is possible to cut open the hands wrist see the knee joints elbow of the lower limbs time required starts in 2 to 3 hours after death and is fully established after about 12 hours stays for next 12 hours and then slowly passes off in the next 12 hours the time required for rigor mortis contraction versus time flow the factors affecting rigor mortis the age the sex condition of muscles cause of death atmospheric temperature all these things as like the cold cooling of the post mortem cooling of the body chills of death same like factors affecting rigor mortis you can see differential diagnosis cold stiffening heat stiffening putrefaction and our expansion this is a dead body of a burns case you have to differentiate from this also the rigor mortis in this also the muscles are stiffen signs of death times of death can be known position of body during death and also if the body is shifted can be known cause and manner of death place of death can be determined cadaver expansion the definition is a condition where in a group of muscles which were in contraction or spasm at the time of death and it to be in spasm even after death without the stage of primary relaxation okay three conditions are sudden somatic death state of contraction in a group of muscles at the time of death the extensive physical and emotional activity at the end of time of death the muscles involved are only those which were in action during death rarely whole body may be involved the time records required is starts immediately after death after 2 to 3 hours it changes into rigor 
breaking of spasm is impossible. My colleague, the importance of cadaveric spasm to know the manner of death, identify the assailant, can be known in case of a homicide. It is a sure sign of death, and it is called the death clutch. It's a sign of violent death. Some struggle has happened before death. Position attitude during the death is clearly not disturbed. See, here the person had a typical mind mental state during cut opening is breast and also is abdominal contents. So the cadaveric spasm has happened where he is holding the knife in his hand, which is a kitchen knife. Some important differences. Postmortem lividity and contusion, you have to differentiate postmortem phenomenon. Postmortem lividity is a postmortem phenomenon. It can be postmortem or antemortem if it's a contusion on dependent parts of body. Contusion happens anywhere in the body. And uh, is epidermal postmortem lividity in case in subdue sub epidermal in case of contusion due to stagnation of blood into unless dilated capillaries due to rupture of capillaries. No swelling usually present on incision fusing points seen. Here in contusion, whole area is bloody. And uh, margins are clear cut in postmortem lividity. In contusion, it is diffuse. Can't see it, get a clear cut, clear crystal clear cut. The postmortem lividity is bluish purple. In contusion, may be red, brown, bluish, black, green, or yellow, depending on stage of healing. The medical legal importance is time since death. You can estimate from the postmortem lividity. The contusion, you can estimate time since death, not the time, but you can estimate the time since, time since the injury. The type of injury, the position of the body from postmortem lividity, but from the posterior contusion, you can estimate the uh, type of weapon, whether it is a, how hard is the weapon. It is definitely a blunt weapon. From that, you can understand the type of injury, how hard is the weapon, shifting of body, age of injury, rigor mortis. Rigor mortis is nothing but we have seen it, stiffening and the cadaveric spasm. We have to differentiate. Rigor mortis happens during molecular death, reaction is alkaline. During somatic death happens the cadaveric spasm and the reaction is acidic. Primary relaxation is present, cadaveric spasm is absent. Rigor mortis is present in all types of death. The cadaveric spasm is seen in sudden death only. Rigor mortis, no precondition. The cadaveric spasm, muscle should be in them actively at times of death. And uh, rigor mortis in whole body, the cadaveric spasm in a group of muscle, rigor mortis can be broken off sometime. And the cadaveric spasm cannot be broken off. And the rigor mortis stays for 24 hours. The cadaveric spasm for two to three hours only. Rigor mortis followed by rigor mortis. Cadaveric spasm followed by secondary relaxation. The medical legal importance is you can estimate the time span since death from rigor mortis and identify the assailant can be known from cadaveric spasm due to evidence preserved in the hand, wrist. Secondary relaxation definition is. After autolysis, muscles are again relaxed, which is called a secondary relaxation. Characteristics, muscles and pupils do not respond to stimuli. Okay. There is no corneal and, and the, the inner reflex, pupillary reflex. Reaction of muscles is again alkaline. Other signs of decomposition are also present. Putrefaction or decomposition, coming to putrefaction or decomposition. Here, the body which is shown in the right corner. It is a decomposed body. Definition, the resolution of body from complex organic to simple inorganic state. Okay. Uh, bought by two processes. One is autolysis and one more is putrefaction. Autolysis is nothing but self-destruction of tissues by lytic enzymes, which is present inside the body itself. Our bodily own enzymes will digest the proteins, lipids, and also the glycogens glucose and uh, the digestive enzymes of the action of the enzymes released after death from tissue cells. The enzymes produced by lives, uh, living saprophytic microorganisms in the body, it is called the putrefaction. Bacterial action, especially the prostidium welching, will produce an enzyme called lecithinase, 
B Proteus E. coli streptococcus during life in GA, the gastrointestinal tract. But after death, found scattered in blood and all tissues and organs. The characteristic changes of the putrefaction are externally. It follows disappearance of rigor mortis, but in hot and humid condition, it commences early. Color changes, greenish discoloration over the right iliac fossa. Winter, so especially in winter, it is taking 24 hours. Summer, it is taking 6 to 12 hours. Internally, under uh, surface of liver, the hemoglobin to self hemoglobin by the hydrogen sulfide. Eyeballs become soft and yielding cornea with milky warm flat. Dislocation spreads to whole abdomen and genitalia. Also appears on chest, neck, face, and arms and leg. These patches gradually deepen in color and become dark blue. First separate and distinct and later whole body is discolored. Marbling, veins of trunks and upper limb, 18 to 12 hours. See, this is called uh, marbling of skin. Here the lysis of RBC occurs and the hemoglobin is uh, it's, uh, released. So what happens is the hydrogen sulfide, which is uh, produced by the, which is produced by the liberation of the sulfur containing amino acids is broken and it produces a greenish discoloration of the vein, superficial veins. So it becomes a self hemoglobin. Development of whole smelling due to gases which are produced due to the breakage of the cells, tissues in the body, sulfur, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, the ammonial gases, all these gases will make the body distended and disfigured and a whole smelling gas is released. The abdominal distension spinsters relax and causes urination and defecation which also causes a whole smell. The gases in tissues, cavities, the hollow organ speeches are blotted and distorted. The eyes out, the eyes pop out, tongue is protruded. The lips are swollen and averted due to gases. Frothy reddish fluid is forced from mouth and nostrils due to purging. It is called the purging of the blood. The last key features are obliterated, obliterated and not uh, recognizable manner it is made. The, abna, the abdominal gas involves loud uh, loud eluding noise on opening. The stomach contents become out and uh, the respiratory tract enters the respiratory tract. Uh, the breast of the female genitalia are distended. The, the penis and the scrotum are swollen. Uh, the gases under the skin, reputation is cut, subcut and emphysema. Blisters containing reddish color fluid, they are all noted. And also, this is the decomposed body. You can see the face completely unidentifiable. The eyes are popping out. The lips are, the lips are swollen. See, the marbling of skin you can see here and there. Here is where the right iliac region. This is where the decomposition changes sets in due to the action of the bacteria, main bacterium, Clostridium welchi. The scrotum and penis, they are distended with gas. See the color of the dead body. See the distension of the abdomen. It's completely distended here. The degree of decomposition is observed and indicated shown below. Greenish discoloration of light iliac fossa. The greenish discoloration of the entire stomach con contents. Distension of uh, abdomen. The marbling of skin. Protrusion of tongue and eyeballs. The blood stain from froth at the mouth and nostrils. Distress and peeling of cuticles, blotting of face, neck, breast, penis, scrotum vulva, regurgitation of stomach contents, the prolapse of rectum and fecal matter, prolapse of uterus and expulsion of fetus, the maggots. The maggots play an important role in uh, uh, estimating the time since death as they form a separate time. So we can estimate the time since death from the maggots formation and laying of eggs. That's a different life cycle of maggots. That's a different study. It's called the entomology of cadavers. And the degloving. Degloving is an important sign. Degloving and destocking. The epidermis of the skin. It uh, peels off 
while decomposition is like removing a glove and uh, the stockings of legs, lower limbs, loosening of hair, loosening of nail, easily pluckable. The nails and the hair are easily pluckable due to the skin getting loosened. The collocative petrifaction and skeletonization. Okay. Decomposed female body. See the the distension, the collapse of the eyeballs or popping out of the eyeballs, the distension of the lips, disfiguration of the face, the hair, see the skin. These are all post-mortem injuries made by the post-mortem people, conducting people. The gases completely distended the giant, uh, this thing, uh, the breasts and the peeling of skin. So you can see the peeling of skin and you can see the uh, dermal area, color changes, you can see. Marbling of skin, you can see it here. You can see the marbling of skin here, the disfiguration of the face, the watery. See, this is the degloving of the skin. The epidermal area is getting, is like out of the glove. This picture also shows the complete disfiguration of the face, popping out of the eye, the popping out of tongue distended lips, disfigured face, complete distension of the abdomen, peeling of the skin. You can see it. Marbling of the skin, you can see. See, due to sulfur, sulfur containing self-hemoglobin. This has happened, the peeling of the skin. Marbling of the skin. See the maggots, the maggots. The blackening of the skin, maggots are formed in here. It's complete different cycle for your life cycle. See the post-mortem blisters due to gas, the scrotal swelling, the penile swelling. Internal phenomenon, color is dark red to brown, blackish instead of red. Early changes are brownish red color of iota and other vessels, intima. Viscera subsequently becomes greasy and softened. Rate of putrefaction of internal organs varies due to difference in their structures and musculars, and fibrous tissues, firmness and des destiny and moisture. The sequence of putrefaction, the larynx and trachea becomes red and then green. The brain of infant turns soft and pulpish gray is green fluid liquefied. The spleen is soft, pulpy, green is steel color in 24 hours and different. Uh, Different mass in two to three days in summer. The liver is soft and flabby in foamy liver. It is a foam, it is called foamy liver. Gas formed in 24 to 36 hours, greenish to cold black. And from all these putrefaction changes, we can estimate the time since death. Depending on the climatic condition, the adult brain will become soft and pulpy, pulpy in 24 hours to 48 hours in summer, and liquefied mass in two to three to four days, and the heart. Becomes soft and flabby, identifiable in months. The lungs become gaseous, bullet under the membrane. Color becomes dark, black, green, soft collapse and reduced to black mass. The kidneys, they become greenish, resist the putrefaction to some extent, but still they will liquefy too. And all stage, at the end stage, kidneys to putrefy. But a huge, uh, but a virgin uterus and a prostate will be the last organ to putrefy. They decompose at the last. You can get a lot of DNA material from these two. The bladder, empty, standard late, esophagus, diaphragm, blood vessels. This is putrefaction for a longer period. The uterus and prostate, fibromuscular organ, so resist putrefaction as I have told you already. It is useful in determining the sex in decomposed bodies. And also, it will have a lot of DNA material. So, it will be easy to determine the DNA and identify the person. And next is one term and mystery, misandry. It will put, uh, resist putrefaction for a longer period. So this is a body of a adiposia form. The fat will form a waxing around the body. And in this case, the body's organs are preserved. See, loaded with fat, the liver, the foamy liver, the first picture shows the foamy liver. The second one is the stomach and the contents. So, decomposed organ. 
terms deliver required by brain grayish mass completely liquefied it's an adult's brain in 3 to 4 days it liquefies liquefies to grayish mass the lungs see it has shrunk in size and uh, the weight you should measure the organ's weight whichever you get according to casper's dictum when exposed to the body is exposed to the air water and the soil the decomposition rate is greater in the soil and half by the water and by less by the air floating of the body in case of a body is been thrown into water the gases decompose and uh, the summer in 24 hours the body comes out due to floating or uh, due to the formation of gases the body floats in the water in 24 hours in summer and in winter by 2 to 3 days the factors which affect the putrefaction are external warmth and clothing moisture air the manner of burial internal organs age and condition of the soil sex and the cause of death the medical legal importance is sure as sign of death and you can estimate time since death approximately from the changes occur and the organs which are decomposed from them adipose is nothing but formation of a wax like substance due to the excess fat content in the body because of that it forms a adipose here around the body the palmitic acid into stearic acid and oleic acid which are the fatty thing is present when a person has a lot of fat in his body under a condition of warm and cold when it is when the body is thrown into a damp wet pond and if it is the area is a sunny area so what happens is the fat content will convert itself into oleic and palmitic and stearic acid and they cover the body and preserve it this is of the formation of adipose here the conditions favoring it one more thing is mummification of the body see this is the body when it's when the completely it's covered with fat this is how the adipose is formed the wounds are preserved the injuries in case of stab injury see so preserved mummification is complete drying of the dead body you must have seen in movies the mummies are formed by complete drying of the contents of the body that's how the mummification happens medical legal importance is to establish cause of death any injuries is recognizable in case of embalming embalming what happens is we inject formalin arsenic lead sulfide spirit glycerin is injected in the arteries to carotid it to preserve the body estimation of time since death will be difficult in case of embalming forensic entomology it's study of the insects different areas different region different countries will have different type of insects which lay eggs in the dead body at different times and these eggs will hatch into maggots and the maggots life cycle differ from each or each insect each cadaver each climate depending on that we can estimate the time since then thank you for listening with patience